Hey everybody, Deathblade here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ where I talk about interesting stuff related to Chinese fantasy novels and to some extent Chinese culture. Today I have one of the most requested topics of all time, that is what is cultivation? So uh, one of the genres of Chinese fantasy, xianxia, or the immortal heroes genre, is sometimes also referred to as cultivation, cultivation novels. And this topic of cultivation comes up in many of the novels. So a lot of people are wondering what's the deal with it. In this video, I'm going to talk about it. Do I have to point out that just a couple days ago I had dental surgery and I got stitches all over this half of my mouth. I should be okay. I should be okay. I just took some antibiotics and painkillers and hopefully none of the stitches pop in the middle of this video, but I gotta get this video done, so let's get started. I'm gonna be splitting up the video into basically two parts. The first, probably shorter part, is going to be designed for people who are not very familiar with uh, cultivation novels and Chinese fantasy novels in general. I think most of you who have read the novels uh, by context kind of know what cultivation is, but I'm gonna define it or kind of describe it very briefly for those who are unfamiliar with it. Then we're gonna go into some of the more nitty gritty about what the words that are usually translated as cultivation actually mean and how they kind of connect to real life Taoist and Buddhist practices. Before I get too far into the video, I wanna point out that I'm very specifically going to just focus on the cultivation. There are some other word combinations that are connected to it, such as cultivation base or cultivator. I plan to do um, different videos about them at another time. Uh, there are terms such as immortal, which I have an entire video talking about that term in connection with other terms. And there's also stuff touching on the Tao. The Tao is another topic that I have not done a video on, but I plan to do in the future. You know, stay tuned for that one. So let's talk about what cultivation is in terms of the novels and how they're used in context. Don't forget that the novels take a lot of real life terms and then appropriate them for use in fiction. Now it's the same with Western fantasy, right? In Western fantasy, you might have paladins, you might have vampires, you might have witches and all these different things. And although such words and terms and concepts exist in real life, usually in the fantasy novels, they're used in a different way and they don't necessarily correlate perfectly to reality. And it's the same with the Chinese fantasy novels. So basically in Chinese fantasy novels, cultivation is when the characters practice whatever technique or ability or magic that they practice um, in order to become more powerful and to uh, perform whatever magical effects come along with this type of magic. Usually the actual practice of cultivation involves sitting down, closing your eyes and meditating then circulating the energy within the body through prescribed paths or along with certain mnemonics that will lead to special abilities, special effects, special techniques and whatnot. Now it doesn't always necessarily have to be along with meditation. Sometimes in the novels these cultivation techniques uh, involve certain courses of action. Maybe it's collecting certain types of energy or certain artifacts. It could be performing certain actions. In some cases, they're like evil cultivation where they'll absorb people or absorb their blood or their spirit or soul or whatever. But in the end, it's basically just a system of magic and the cultivation is how they progress and rise through the ranks of that magic and just through the ranks of power in general. In the novels, the term cultivate or cultivation can be used as a noun or a verb, and a lot of times translators will talk about just the cultivation of a character and they'll refer to it as more of a noun than as a verb, and in that case, it's basically just referring to their level. In fact, sometimes you'll even see cultivation level. I think this concept of leveling is partly invented and partly connected to certain aspects of Chinese mythology and history that I will get into in a later video because I don't want this video to get too complicated. So that's kind of the basic introduction to cultivation. Now, if you have read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels, I think you have been able to see from context what cultivation is. Let's get into the nitty gritty of what the Chinese characters are and how they pertain to real life. So the first character is the character Xiu, which is the primary character, which means cultivation just by itself and which is combined with other characters to produce many versions of what cultivation is. I'm gonna pull up the definition right now to show you. And as you can see, there are a variety of definitions to embellish, to decorate, to repair, to overhaul. Uh, the actual word cultivate is in there along with the word to study, to build, to construct. And let's scroll down. This is kind of relevant. I like this particular dictionary because it goes into the components which make it up. And this one says that the meaning component is a set of decorative stripes which point to the original meaning of the word which means to decorate. But in the end, this character, Xiao, is it's actually a, a character that gets combined with a lot of different other characters to mean many words, some of which have nothing to do with magic, Taoism, and Buddhism or anything like that. But the basic idea is to repair, to mend, or to improve. Now I have a whole list of 
words that are comprised of xiao plus another character that you will commonly see in the novels translated probably as cultivate or cultivation, but they could be translated in other ways depending on how the translator chooses to do it. And I'm gonna start with the two most common. They are real life terms and they have been appropriated for use in the cultivation novels. And those two words are xiu xing and xiu lian. Now they are actually very different, but even I will sometimes translate both of them just as simply to cultivate or cultivation. Let's start with the first one, xiu xing. As you can see here, it basically says uh, to practice Buddhism or Taoism, to devote oneself to, to spiritual development, to practice an art, to rectify one's behavior, to cultivate oneself in right practice. And incidentally, I just want to put a disclaimer here. This is not intended to be a scholarly video. This is a subject that you could write a book on. So I'm not intending this to be like super detailed. This is just an overview. Um, anyway, in the research Madam Deathbed and I did, we found that the Xiu Xing seems to be associated a little bit more with Buddhism than with Taoism, although it's used in both. And essentially what it's referring to is it's referring to inner, inner cultivation, to change your, um, your thoughts, your principles, your inner self, uh, in order to make yourself a better person. So in real life, that kind of xiu xing, that kind of cultivation is about internal stuff and it's about improving yourself as a person. Now the other term is xiu lian and pulling up this definition, you can see it says of Taoists to practice austerities or asceticism and basically all the, de all the definitions kind of like reflect that same wording. And in our research in Chinese, again, Madame Deathway and I found that this term did tend to apply more toward Taoism than it did to Buddhism and uh, this one is more referring to one's actions, I guess you could say, and uh, how you improve your in your connection to the world, maybe, as opposed to the other kind of cultivation, which is more about in your in inner self. And these are the two characters which I see most often combined with xiu to make the words that mean cultivation in the novels, xiu xing and xiu lian. Now, here's the thing. Most of the time, I find that they're used synonymously. I feel like the authors aren't particularly concerned with going into the deeper meanings of the two different characters as they are applied in real life and how they are used in Buddhism and Taoism. They tend to, in my opinion, sort of be used synonymously. That said, the second one, the xiu lian, the second character lian is the word that is commonly part of another word that means training. And so this word, the xiu lian, is a lot of times used to essentially imply training, in my opinion. So a lot of times when the characters are actually not just sitting there meditating, but actually doing something to improve their skills and abilities. A lot of times you'll see this one, as opposed to the xiu xing, which does tend to be more about the meditating and the casting your thoughts in, in inside. So here we have the two most common ones, xiu xing, xiu lian. Those are the main uh, cultivation ones. The second one, xiu lian, kind of being more on the training side and having to do less with the internal aspects. So let's go down the list with some other ones. Next, I wanna talk about Xiu Xin and Xiu Shen. Now, these are very similar and they actually connect to the previous two. Xin means heart and Shen means the body. So Xiu Xin essentially means to cultivate the heart. Xiu Shen essentially means to cultivate the body. Now when you're talking about the very first um, cultivation term, Xiu Xing, essentially that involves, like I was saying, inner stuff. So in the definitions and the explanations we found in Chinese, essentially the Xiu Xing cultivation involves first the cultivation of the heart, and then second, how that manifests itself in the physical body or in your dealings with others, which is the Xiu Shen. Now in the cultivation novels, usually it's less cerebral and it's more practical because most of the time the cultivation re refers to some kinds of powerful magic. But that concept kind of remains where a lot of times you have to cultivate the inner self before you can cultivate the outer self. And I do see both of these, the cultivate the heart and cultivate the body or xiu xin and xiu shen uh, in the novels as well. Going down here are two more terms which are, are also very common. They are xiu zhen and xiu xian. Now xiu zhen, the zhen means truth. And in xiu xian, the xian means immortal. So xiu zhen is actually relatively straightforward. Since we know what xiu means, it means to improve, to develop, to mend, to make better. Jun means that which is real or reality. And so xiu zhen, I mean, if you want to interpret it directly, it basically means working on cultivating or improving things which are real as opposed to things which are false or illusory. Now in real life religion, you can kind of imagine what that implies. In the cultivation novels, um, a lot of times this is taken literally. In the novels that I have translated, for example, I Shall Sow the Heavens and even in Sage Monarch, there are very literal interpretations of what is true and what is false. And so cultivating those things are, you know, the difference between what is true and what is false is important. What is true and real 
and what is false and illusory. You know, there are different aspects of the same thing sometimes. And okay, I don't want to get into too much complicated theory, but the point is this, just that this Shyojan is focused on uh, cultivating the aspects of reality and truth. And sometimes this Shyojan is used to describe the entire cultivation world in general, and sometimes even the genre. I would say this is the third that is the most commonly seen as translated cultivation in the novel. So I talked earlier about Xiaoxing, Xiaolian, this is Xiaojan. And so Xiaojan, I think, is the third, which is really commonly seen, just translated as cultivation. In my current project, Sage Monarch, I can't remember which chapter it is, there's a whole passage about Xiaojan and how it's about cultivating reality and how it's different from Xiaoxing and Xiaolian and different things like that. So I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. So I talked about Xiaojan. Now let's talk about Xiao Xian. So Xian literally means immortal, but it, it can mean other things than that. Um, if you're interested, check out the video where I talk about that specific character, um, Xian. So in Taoism, Xian doesn't, it sometimes refers to literal mythological immortal creatures, which incidentally, as I've pointed out in the past, immortal doesn't mean like the Western definition necessarily of somebody that cannot die. Rather, Xian is basically referring to just mythological divine beings. Now, generally speaking, they probably are going to be able to live forever, but that's not the general meaning of the character in itself. It's essentially referring to some enlightened being. Uh, in real life Taoism, it could refer to some sort of like hermit or mystic that lives off in the mountains. And so Xiaojun essentially means to cultivate immortality. I spoke wrong there. I said Xiaojun instead of Xiaolian. Instead of Xiaoxian. Oh my God, so many Xiaos, jeez. So Xiaoxian is kind of about that. It's about literally practicing some sort of religious um, cultivation with the goal of becoming an immortal or a transcendent being. Now in the Chinese fantasy novels, obviously that can be taken literally because in those novels, the characters usually start out as trying to become an immortal, one of those super, super powered, transcendent, divine, heavenly beings. Uh, and so a lot of times you'll see this Xiaoxian to cultivate immortality, essentially being used as cultivation to rise through the ranks to become more powerful and to become an immortal. And the final one that I want to talk about is Xiao Dao. Now, if you read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels, you know that it's always talking about the Dao. Most of them talk about the Dao at some point or another. Again, that's a complicated topic that I will get to in another video because the Tao is, yeah, that's complicated and open to a lot of interpretation. It could mean, you know, the way, the path. In the fantasy novels, it usually takes on some, some sort of like mystical, magical meaning. There isn't necessarily one Tao. Depending on the universe and the author, you know, each person might have their own Tao, which they have to discover, or there could be a prescribed set, for example, 3,000 Tao's that um, you know, govern existence or they govern this particular aspect of resistance. Existence, man, I'm really stumbling over my words today, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to make this video informative, but not, you know, jabbering too much. I'm trying to cram a lot of information into a short. Okay, anyway, so to pull up just the dictionary definition really quickly, you can see it says cultivate oneself according to a religious doctrine. And so within the Chinese fantasy novels, usually you're not talking about religious doctrine, but you're talking about some sort of set of practices or beliefs practiced by an organization or just in general that that seeking of the Tao. So in this video, we've talked about Xiu Xin, uh, Xiu Lian, Xiu Xin, Xiu Shen, Xiu Zhen, Xiu Xian, and Xiu Dao. That's a bunch of different Xiu's that could all technically just be translated cultivate, and sometimes they are translated cultivate depending on the context, but literally, uh, you know, Xiaoxing is referring to sort of like your way of fitting into the world maybe, and Xiaolian is referring to how you act within the world uh, and could be training. So Xiaoxing, Xiaolian, then you have uh, Xiao, Xiaoxin and Xiaoshan to cultivate the heart, to cultivate the body. Then you have uh, Xiaojun to cultivate that which is real or that which is reality. Xiaoxian to cultivate toward immortality and Xiaodao to cultivate the Tao. So I hope that these, this general kind of overview of the different common terms for Xiao and cultivate can help you to sort of understand what's going on in the novels. Now, one of the problems is, whether it's myself or other authors, is that most of the time, the actual second character combination many times isn't really that important. Whether it's Xiao Lian or Xiao Dao, it basically just means they're practicing their magical arts or they're training in their magical arts. And it's really not particularly important to differentiate which one it's talking about. Sometimes there will be a play on words in which the author will, will explain why, you know, Xiao Xing is about Xiao Xin and Xiao Shen or something like that. Except when there's those plays on words, usually it's kind of not important to tell the difference between them. And so I think for the average person reading the novels, 
you're probably going to come across the word cultivation or maybe practice or training depending on what the translator wants to do and not really know which term the author is actually using and so it's going to be difficult for you to tell the difference for those of us who do the translating as we read you know we can kind of sort of see in which scenario the author is going to use which term or which other term and how by context the author is defining them uh, for you average readers who are reading the translation it's probably not particularly important uh, I do try to do my best to differentiate them when necessary. So that is your overview into what cultivation is. Uh, do you have any insights? Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Please do leave them below. I try to check as many comments as possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please do hit like and subscribe and the notification bell and all that. And I really do appreciate any support through the links in the description, whether that's a donation or um, just clicking around in the recommendations I have. I currently don't have anything like Patreon or anything like that set up. I really want to make sure I'm able to pump out the videos regularly before I do anything like that. Uh, that said, it does involve a lot of work to research, to record, um, and then for Madame Deathblade, my wife, to edit the videos. Thank you to her for doing that. And that's it for this video. I will see you next time. Gosla.